How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today I'm going to be giving you my list of five mods that I would not do to a street car or a daily driver. Anything that you're going to be spending a large amount of time driving around and it's not racing, don't do these mods. Learn from my mistakes. We're going to use my Mustang actually as an example. So these are all mods that I've done that I would maybe think twice about doing. So we'll go through my list. We'll see what you guys think and uh... I'll try to give you guys some alternatives instead of butchering your guys' drivability and street ability. I wouldn't consider this a fully fledged race car, like I still do drive it on the street and stuff like that. But with the mods that I'm going to list, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have done, after a while you don't enjoy driving them on the street as much. So anyways, let's start. Also, the new shocks and K member are in, so you guys can stop hearing me whine about waiting on them. They're in, I still need to go to get an alignment and then... I could really finish up the video. It's Sunday, no alignment shops are open, so we'll just wait till tomorrow. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, some of these might not be classified as mods to a certain extent because you're not buying something for your vehicle. Some of them, you're taking away things from your vehicle. Like this first one, gutting your car. Now, as you can see, my Mustang is gutted. It's a little bit of a mess right here because, uh, I mean, I don't have seats to put stuff on, so it just, it looks messier in general. However, I don't recommend you do this. As you can tell, it's very echoey in here. It doesn't sound all that pleasant in here. Uh, it's loud, you lose space, and uh, you don't gain a whole lot. Like, depending on how heavy your interior is, you're not gaining much, especially out of like an older car like this or like my Honda. I'm never gonna gut my EG hatch because the Honda materials, <laughs> I might shed five to 10 pounds. It's not a big deal. This Mustang, I bought it and it was already gutted. I kinda wish it wasn't. Because I would be able to enjoy my music and not get a headache after driving for long periods of time. Because since my car is gutted, all you hear is the loud exhaust. It makes it really hard after a long period of time. You're just hearing constant. just And I have mufflers. If I had a straight pipe, it would be even worse. So unless you're building a dedicated race car, maybe just don't gut your car. It doesn't change all that much. Especially not the amount that this car was gutted. If it was gutted to the point where it had no door cards, no carpet, no dash, no center console, then it would make a, a big enough change, I think. But just taking out your rear seats and your trunk liner, it's not really worth it. If anything, just get rid of your spare and call it a day. Now, while talking about gutting a car, I mentioned something else. Straight piping. Don't do it. This car, luckily, was never straight piped. Actually, it was. When it was a three valve, I did straight pipe it completely, and I loved how it sounded. I was also a 19 year old kid. If you combine the two, you've just created one of the quickest ways to go deaf by the age of 30. Your, your hearing is gonna be shot. I know you might like hearing your car, but I promise you a nice muffler will sound even better than a straight piped exhaust. I can't really think of one car that sounds absolutely beautiful straight piped. I don't care what it is. 2J, Coyote, don't even get me started. These Coyote boys love straight pipe in their car. If this thing was straight piped, you guys would all laugh at me. It would sound so bad. Please, if you have a Coyote, do not straight pipe your car. They do not sound good straight piped. Now, like I said, luckily this right here isn't straight piped. Now, like I said, luckily this right here isn't straight piped. I do have some Magnaflow mufflers and I think that's it. I don't have any resonators and I don't have any cats. Uh, it is an out of state car. It's not from California, thank God. So I don't have to, uh, you know, abide by that stuff but yes if this thing was straight piped i would be yelling into the camera right now because i wouldn't be able to hear myself talk i'll throw in a clip of how it sounds and you guys could tell me if you think it would sound better straight piped i know it wouldn't so if you say it would you're lying all right this next one is a mod that a lot of people do that i guarantee they regret i was one of those people i did it to my supra Fixed bucket seats, the most atrocious thing you could do to your car if you drive it every day. A fixed bucket seat has to be one of the most uncomfortable things you could sit in in traffic or trying to go through a drive through or anything like that. It is absolutely disgusting. Luckily, the Mustang does not have fixed bucket seats. That's one of the actual good things about it. Get something, if you want in a more aggressive seat, get something that can recline, get something that you have sliders. Don't get something that you have to climb into this is a really comfortable but still aggressive seat i'm also only going straight so if you have a car that's going to go through corners it might be a little bit different however there's plenty good options to where you won't sacrifice the comfort that you would have in a more 
regular style seat like that. But this doesn't just apply to people that go through twisties. There's plenty of slow ass cars out there that have the Kirky aluminum seat. They have no business having that seat. I don't even have that seat. There is no point in getting a seat like that unless you're literally trying to set just track record times. Like you do not need to shave that much weight savings. It does, it's, especially there's idiots online that have that and then the, the rest of their interior is full. It makes no fucking sense in my opinion. I highly advise you don't get a fixed bucket seat. Get something with some adjustment so you can have some comfort, especially if you have a four seater. When I had the fixed buckets in the Supra before I put in the confettis, you could not access the back seats. It turned this car into a two seater. It's way nicer now that it has the confettis in there because you can go into the back seat. You can uh, have more people in your car. Just don't do it. I hated driving that car with the fixed seats. It was super uncomfortable. Just don't do it. Learn from my mistakes. You won't be any less of a man if your seat reclines. I promise you that. And if it reclines, still, you know, have some fun in it if you know what I'm saying. Anyways, moving on. Enough of that. All right, this next one, the Mustang has and the Civic has. And I wish neither of them had this. AC delete. The only reason why the Mustang has an AC delete is because the Coyote could not communicate with the chassis harness. That's the only reason. And I had a few different people look at it and try to get it to work because, oh God, AC, especially if you live in like SoCal, Florida, Texas, you need AC. You need that shit. And the fact that this doesn't have AC really bums me out. Once we figured out that we could not get it to work, I mean, I'm sure if we spent enough time, we might have been able to get it to work, but it might have just been like a on off full blast or nothing regardless it didn't work we ended up just gutting everything and deleting it so i mean we cleaned up a lot of room in the engine bay we i do we definitely shed pounds but i would rather still have ac i think ac is a must all of my other cars except for the honda have ac and i really wish it did as well because driving around with no ac blows it blows dick it's it, uh, like it doesn't blow cold air that's for sure it blows dick it sucks and the trade-offs aren't even all that now like i said if it's a swap car should happens but i mean if you're driving around a swap cars or daily you've got some real nuts hanging low so you're you're a man's man at that point ac in my opinion is a must the moment you start deleting ac it's not really becoming a daily driver or a street car anymore that's just the reality of it i remember i remember contemplating for the longest time back when it was a three valve on deleting the ac and now that it's gone I wish I never deleted it. I also contemplated deleting the radio, which isn't a mod, but that was one thing I contemplated deleting too, which would save weight. Like you would save a good 20 pounds if you deleted all the speakers and the radio, but I like listening to tunes while I drive. Even though I can't hear them too well because the fucking car is gutted, I still like trying to listen to them. So there's that. Anyways, the last one, and this is one that only the Mustang has as well, slicks. And I mean real slicks. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about no ET Street SS, you know, that's clearly a streetable tire. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about some off-road use only slicks. That is a slick. There is very little grooves in it. It is meant to go straight on dry pavement and that is it. It looks great. It's a 10 out of 10 for looks, but if you're driving this and even on those tires, if I go through a puddle, I lose traction. A puddle, not, not rain. If I drive out of a driveway or off of a street, and you know how usually in the little drainage passages, there's sometimes water? If I turn in that, it will slide. And it will scare the shit out of you every time because you don't know when you're going to regain traction or if you're going to regain traction. If you were doing this on the road and you came across a puddle or it started raining, you're screwed. You are done. Do not put slicks on your car and daily drive it. Just don't do it. ET Street R, maybe it's still a street tire, but a dedicated slick that is not road legal, there's a reason why it's not road legal. So probably don't do it. I only drive this car when I wanna go out and have fun or test it or maybe go get some ice cream or something. I'm not driving this thing on a, on a fucking uh, road trip. Don't do it. It's also not worth it. Daily driving around slicks, you're just wasting them. So don't do it. Get a harder compound street tire and drive around on that. And then have a, a set of slicks on the side for when you want to go out and have fun with the boys. The Mustang is the only car on dedicated slicks. The Supra had dedicated slicks for a while, but the ET Street SS hooked just fine. And if I get caught in some water, I'm fine. So it's a win-win all around. Anyways, this is my quick list of five mods that I would avoid doing to your street car and or daily driver. Don't do these. Just don't. Or do these and then eventually buy another daily and then you'll end up doing that to that daily and then you'll end up with five cars eventually probably like me so 
Anyways, let me know your list. If you have any that I missed, uh, subscribe. And until next video, peace. I will be filming more with the Mustang today and should be finishing it up by tomorrow. Deuces. See ya.